Hey, what's up, guys? Oh, just getting back. Finally, ready to do my review on my Benchmade 940 after carrying it for uh, almost a month, about three weeks. I've been carrying it, and I'm I'm already biased to it because I love it. I love the weight of the blade with the axis lock. I love the way the scales feel. I love the deep carry pocket clip. I love the smooth action. I'm just, I'm in love with it. Um, it's everything I expected from the Benchmade 940 from all the reviews. Everything was dead on. I, I do have a few complaints with it, but for the most part, this is a very nice knife. Now, like I said, I've carried this for about three weeks. I happen to be a, a industrial mechanic, so it's not gonna stay pretty. This is not a knife that is only gonna be carried here or there. This is an everyday carry, right? So I carry this every day. I cut plastic, I scratch in wood, I whittle when I get bored. I carry this knife and it's got markings on it where you can tell that it's been carried, but nothing to hurt the knife. The knife still looks great, just has scratches and scuffs on it. And, uh, I like the pocket clip better this way, honestly. When it's perfect shiny black, the handle's perfect powdered green. I mean, it's it's nice, but this is love. Love is put into this knife. This isn't something off a shelf. This is something that I use daily. So I really have gotten into it. Uh, it if it wasn't for YouTube videos, knife YouTube videos, I really wouldn't have understood why you would spend so much on a knife. I mean, just a few months back, I was, I would never spend over a hundred dollars on a knife. I'd never spend over $200 on a knife. There's no reason it's a knife, it cuts, right? Like they all cut. And if you buy five, $10 knives, you lose them all the time. I don't want to lose my $200 knife. But the difference is you actually care when you, put money into the knife, when you actually pay for the quality, when you like the knife, when it feels good in your hand, and you actually use it more often than you ever thought about using knives. There's reasons for this. I love Reese cups. I love to slice the packaging open on the Reese cups with this. Just slice it open. No pulling, tugging, ribbon. I know, it's excessive, but we all find reasons to use our knives, right? Reasons other than what you would normally use a knife for, especially if you have a new knife. I have to wipe that off. It shows up in the camera really well. A fingerprint, it's bothering me. Let's see, did I get it? Uh, mostly, yeah, I can live with that. But, uh, yeah, this knife, it's an awesome knife. It's, of course, everybody's already done their reviews on 940s because I'm a late bloomer, but just for the sake of the review, it's got a blade length of 3.4 inches. Not, like, ridiculously big, but... What you would expect in a, a real pocket knife that you're going to carry every day. It gets the job done. It's not too much. It's not really big and scary, especially in Alabama where I'm from. Roll Tide. Uh, it's got an overall length of 7.9 inches. Weighs 2.9 ounces. The handle material is aluminum with a titanium backspacer, an anodized titanium backspacer. And the blade material is CPM S30V steel which is a good steal, supposedly. I'm not convinced at the moment that it's as great as everybody said it was at one point. I guess because the bar has been set so high with all these super steals that have come out that now this doesn't really seem like 
that hard of a steel, I guess. When you, it, it, this knife is sharp. I haven't sharpened it yet, haven't resharpened it yet. I've stropped it a couple times, but it's not shaving sharp. And it's not sliced through paper sharp anymore. So I need to strop it again or actually go ahead and sharpen. I um, don't know if you can see right here, but uh, yeah, that shows up. I was taking a screw out of a remote control for my little boy, I have a three year old, and I couldn't find a screwdriver in the house. And instead of going out to the shop, I decided I'd just pop the knife out and use it. That's what a 940 is for, right? It can be a screwdriver. And I chipped the edge a little bit right there, so I need to sharpen it and fix that anyway, I guess. But it didn't hold a razor sharp edge very long, and I guess that's to be expected with as thick as the blade is. and. No, it's not extremely thick, uh, thin behind the edge. I, I'm still learning about all that, but um, it makes sense, right? So I, I don't know enough about it to really comment on it, but I know what I heard and it made sense. So I can believe it. I can go for it. Uh, I bought this knife at St. Nick's Knives in Athens, Alabama. Uh, really good people. Really helpful. Knife came. It was perfectly centered when I got it. Everything was right on it. They put me a deep carry pocket clip before I left the store. Um, and I've had it ever since and carried it nearly every day. I've bought a few other knives since I bought this knife and I've carried those a couple days here and there, but this is my everyday carry. This will be the knife that I carry with me unless I'm just checking out a new knife or reviewing a knife. Until another knife comes in and says, hey, that's my spot, and then we'll do a video about it. Figure it out. But overall, this is a really good knife. Strong, sharp, good for anything. Uh, disappears when you put it in your pocket. You can't really tell it's there. The ergonomics feel really good for me. Feels like it's made just for me. I like the way that blade's shaped at the top too. It's pretty awesome. Um, I'm an Axis Lock fanboy. I, I can't even begin. The, the reason I got into knives with, is watching and seeing the Axis Locks and seeing people flicking them and dropping them closed and the fidget factor of the knives. I love it. I really do. I, I just think it's the best lock. I don't understand why. Every lock doesn't have an access lock. And I guess more do now, you know, at the moment since the patents ran out. Um, I wanted to get a 940-1. I really did because it's awesome looking. But the more videos I watched that showed the screws that stuck out into the housing on a 300 almost dollar now, 250 $300 brand new. Um, I, it... I don't want to think of myself as a knife snob because I don't even know enough to be a knife snob, but I know enough to know that I don't want screws sticking out where my blade goes. And uh, I really don't want that from a company who has a, a bad history of blade centering. So, and you know, I went with the aluminum version over the G10 version, the Dash 2, because I just, this is the 940 I think of when I think 940, right? Like, Ranger Stars 940, the original 940. Well, I guess it had like CPM 154 or something, mm, some other steel, 154 CM maybe, not sure. But um, this is S30V, the Dash 1 was S90V. The Dash 1's a beautiful knife and it, it felt great in the hand, but the original was a hundred dollars cheaper and it's the original and it feels awesome i handed this knife to my best friend who thinks i'm crazy because i've spent so much time with the knives lately i'm constantly fiddling with them constantly playing with them checking them out taking them apart putting them back together seeing how they work and spending uh, more money on it than i'm proud of and I handed this knife to him when I bought it and I said, see if you can tell me what makes this knife worth 
$200. Now, of course, $180, $179 maybe is what it was, plus tax. Uh, St. Nick's Knives, they match Blade HQ pricing, so I don't want to add like their price gouging or anything. They'll match it if you, if you request that. Their in-store price is a little higher, but uh, that's to be understood with a brick and mortar. But they do price match on Benchmade, Blade HQ prices, or their online store, which is usually about the same as Blade HQ. Um, anyway, I kind of forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> anyway, I handed this knife to him, and I was asked him what did he think made it, you know, worth $200, what makes this a $200 knife. And he held it, he closed it. He looked at it, spun it around, checked out the clip, checked out the scales and the blade and the shape and how it opened and closed. Of course, he did it this way. So I had to show him that he could drop the blade. Once he saw that he could drop the blade, he he liked it. He, he guessed that it was because of the handles. The aluminum handles is why it was so expensive and that it was really smooth and that Maybe the blade was good. So I got it pretty much right. That, that's what makes this knife worth it to me. And I gotta say, I'm impressed. I, I'm a Benchmade fanboy at this moment. I, I have this and the Mini Grip 557 I bought for my girlfriend. Now I really need to do a, a better video on that than the first one, but anyway. I have this and that video, and these are the two Benchmates that I have. I've also got a Spider Co. to do a review on, a Honey Badger to do a review on, a Case Pruner Knife or Hawkbill to do a review on. Oh, quite a few more, honestly. Um, can't really think of all of them right now, but that's not important. That's for later. This here is awesome. I highly recommend it if you're just getting into knife collecting or knife enthusiast, I guess you would say, because I wouldn't call myself a collector. I don't plan on keeping knives and, and storing them nice and beautiful like. Um, I plan on carrying them. And... I plan on carrying this knife until I review one that I like more. Happy to take any recommendations on which knives to buy and review next, but I have a few in the chamber to keep us busy until then. Well, if you're still watching at this point, I appreciate it. And uh, if you watch this long, take the time to subscribe, comment, be entered into the knife giveaways. We're doing one at 50, one at 100, one at 200, one at 500, one at 1,000. And once we hit 1,000 subscribers, that'll be a Sabenza or equal price of your choice. Thank you.